So all of a sudden, there's a lot of interest in the SPL machine head because people think that Serban Genya's secret weapon for his excellent mixes that he does is this piece of a gear. And I sold that to him originally like 20, 25 years ago. And I got the second one for, for John Haynes too. So that's in his studio. But uh, some company... Uh, Make Believe Studios, really nice people. Um, I, I talked to them on the phone. Uh, they created a plugin of that machine head. Uh, 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 what do you call it? hardware? Uh, which which is cool. And uh, Servants endorsed it. And now I'm seeing all these videos on YouTube. Of, you know, people saying, "Well, yep, that's a secret secret ingredient. That's how he's doing it." Not giving any consideration to the man's ears. And his experience and through the years, knowing how to balance things and make things sound right. I've been there in the room when he's mixing and there's a whole lot more to it than just, uh, uh, you know, slapping a plug in on there. But the whole reason I'm saying all this is I was watching all these YouTubes and there's somebody has a video interview. The servant didn't do for anybody. Somehow it was a private conversation and uh, somebody grabbed it off. They did, did a video conference and they grabbed it and they said, here's a, an interview with Serban, which I talked to him. He, he doesn't remember ever doing that as an interview. He's probably talking to a friend. But the funny thing about it is my name comes up and uh, he, it's, it's, I brought a pair of speakers for him to try at uh, Larry Gold Studio, which is on 12th and Callow Hill in Philadelphia. And uh, uh, Serban, he, he, he was telling me, uh, yeah, I think of when I was doing the Jill Scott record. So I, he says I brought him a pair of Adams. I don't remember Adams, but maybe I did. But uh, it is true, you know, if you listen to the, the video, and, I'll, and I'll, clip, I'll put it on here, that, uh, he, you know, he mixed with them and then he went back to his pro acts and things weren't exactly the way that they were supposed to be. In fact, that they were way off. And Serban even showed me, he says, you could physically see the woofer in the Pro-Ax, um, how it reacts when the, the mix is right and how it's reacting when the mix is wrong because it, it, it'll push out way too far than it should, uh, which makes the mix sound wrong. So he's, he's going by visual feedback as well as by his ears uh, on, on what's going on. But I thought I'd post this. It's funny that he, he mentions my name. I, I told him it's my new ringtone, him him saying my name, and he thought that was funny. Here you go. I forget the name of it, but George. Remember George Hajwanu? Yeah. Comes in with these Adam speakers and goes, you got to check these out. You got to check these out. It's like, okay. feels amazing. It's like, oh, shit, this is really good. I might get me some of these. And they're powered and um, with the ribbon tweeters. I'm done with the mix. I said, oh, let's see what it sounds like on my Pro Axe. I pull that up again. Put those back up. And next thing you know, you've got all these crazy popping, like this low end, like the kick in the bass is like hitting at the exact same time and phasing like the phase line up just perfectly. And you've got like, you know, the, the, the woofers about to shoot across the room because you've got all this stuff lining up. And those, the atoms didn't, didn't uh, reveal that because they had like this protection circuitry or whatever to protect the speakers and compression um limiting or whatever and had you know basically hit all that so i was like oh shit now i gotta go back and fix all this stuff so the point is that in sit different situations will reveal different problems and um cleaning up and taking away certain things makes a big difference on what you can now add and you know maximize on on the other side so that's one thing i i i think i i can add to that